Hello, my name is Lama Yekilosa. I'm the abbot of Kaju Samueling Tibetan Buddhist Center in, in Europe. It is the first Tibetan Buddhist Center in United Kingdom or Europe. And this is our 50th anniversary. And we are very, very devoted to uh, 17th Kamapa, which is lineage. Our big monastery is up in Scotland, which is known almost all over the world. This is our branch, and I felt very uh, happy to actually receive His Holiness 17th Kamapa here, and the uh, uh, students around the world, uh, they were so impressed, they were so uh, pleased and happy to finally, after so many years of waiting him, coming here to give us blessing and help us to go in the uh, most peaceful and most, we call, effective way of leading a life with a lot of tolerance and compassion and caring to other human beings. We have been so fortunate now to have uh, His Holiness uh, 17th uh, Jalong Kamapa or Gentinle Dorje visiting here in London. And that is his first uh, UK visit, historic visit. We had, of course, the 16th Kamapa. His Holiness the 16th Kamapa came in 1974. He came again in 1977. I myself took refuge and became a Buddhist in 1977 when His Holiness came to Samyaling Ling in December 1977. So now we are overjoyed to have the 17th Kamapa finally visiting after all these years. It is a great occasion. We feel so honored and so delighted to have him visit Samizong London and of course to receive his teachings and his blessings. It felt like a huge family gathering. And uh, when he was teaching over the weekend in Battersea, there were so many familiar faces, even though it was maybe two and a half thousand people, it really felt like a big family. All these Dharma brothers and sisters coming together who have known each other for decades, some for a very, very long time, some for a shorter time. And now this great teacher arrived after all these years of expectation and waiting. <laughs>
大吉祥一声。大吉祥一声。大吉祥一声。大吉祥一声。大吉祥一声。大吉祥一声。大吉祥一声。大吉祥一声。大吉祥一声。大吉祥一声。大吉祥一声。大吉祥一声。大吉
这个是日这三年零五日打了也那个确实好点，五日一打，俺打那个是第一位第三个，这个女班那不错啦，陈俊那不错啦，俺打那先给，像上了的啊，俺打的，俺是第一位，被米四打，超级路切切。anta kasu ay yaa wuxuu raashu muuqa, an kasaan di sunjo na bekaaliniya, taa di soo samalo cida, di soo samalo samay di resko, ina tigi step di di soo shanaa taawtu, kasaan di, tiri inti beyaawtu, tiri inti kasaan pesu ma taan jumse kaay ha ku maso, ina yaa taa samalo tuu si shay. Of course, with this being my first trip to the United Kingdom, and Kagyu Sami Ling being the very important place that it is for the Kagyu lineage, it would have been very fitting for me to be able to visit Kagyu Sami Ling during my first visit to England. But that obviously has not been possible this time around. Uh, my situation in India is not one of uh, full independence. It is a situation that entails a great amount of dependence upon other forces and factors. And in particular, uh, with regard to the, po the possibility of visiting Samye Ling, it seems that a bunch of falsehoods were fabricated and used as an excuse uh, uh, to assert that it wouldn't be convenient or uh, prudent for me to visit Samye Ling uh, during this first visit. So whatever the case may be with regard to all of that, I wasn't able to go to Samye Ling. However, I've been able to visit an important branch of Samye Ling, which is uh, Kagyu Samye Zong London. Therefore, uh, since I've been able to visit this branch of Samye Ling, I'm going to go ahead and recognize this visit to Kagyu Samye Zong London as uh, a stand-in for my first visit to Kagyu Samye Ling itself. I'm very happy to be amongst all of you. All of the representatives of the various Dharma centers who are gathered here, the leaders of the centers, the directors of the centers, uh, the monks and nuns, and all of the Sangha, as well as all of you gathered here, all of the preparations you have made for my visit and my teachings are greatly appreciated. In particular, I heard that it was the uh, Samye Ling associated team that made all the preparations for the stage, including the throne. And you did a wonderful job, but I must say that the steps to the throne that were used at my program over the weekend were a little bit scary. <laughs> The steps up to the throne today, on the other hand, were very nice, so I don't know why you didn't use them over the weekend. <laughs> <coughs> Anyhow, I would like to thank you all. I Lama Yishi Be Step to Jati Nala Tradition <laughs> Lama Yeshe is someone who has a very dark soul. <laughs> so I think I've caught on to the idea now. He's doing this to give me a hard time. <laughs> Tak, nanti, anjir, 
the same ジャパンのジャパンのジャパンのジャパンのジャパンのジャパンのジャパンのジャパンのジャパンのジャパンのジャパンのジャパンのジャパンのジャパンのジャパンのジャパンのジャパンのジャパンのジャパンのジャパン
Of course, Rinpoche helped many Tibetans outside Tibet, but even inside Tibet. He lent great assistance to the Tibetan people, building monasteries, schools, hospitals, and giving resources in other ways. He became well known within Tibet and considered by all Tibetan people as a precious treasure. And even more so since he passed away. Since he has passed, it has become even more abundantly evident how much of a treasure he was to Tibetans everywhere, inside and outside of Tibet, and how great of a loss his passing represents. Nevertheless, following Rinpoche's passing, Lama Yeshe has um, mustered all of his energy and concentrated it into the goal of continuing Akong Rinpoche's enlightened activities and continuing to propagate his vision. And under the guidance of Lama Yeshe, all of you have assisted in this endeavor of continuing Akong Rinpoche's enlightened activities and vision. And these efforts have come along very nicely. There is a very positive environment that has developed in this way in the wake of Rinpoche's passing. And this gives me great encouragement. So I'd like to thank all of you for this. Um, Children. 
This is now under the chair where I see. Soon go, from the chair, you can see the soon go. Chair where I'm doing this chart, you will use that digits and then Lama is here, the Lama soon, I give me chess of Cade. Cade Lama said, not to bed. Lama Cade. 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 Watch very, very much. Very famous. No, no, not that one. Cade. Cade Lama. You know, Tibetan is Lama Cade Lama. Cade Lama Lama. Today, you just have a and a kuzul laya nge lab shi hai. And a Quran ta ta wu mu zin zu ya wu chuk na and jema kya an shi ka le ha ko yo mo rez. Yina ta wu process te tez ji saan wana bu chya kwa ya te bu chi ki ya se di sun jok ya bu ya wu chya kwa ya te ke chok bu cha ni dosa kwa. The topic of Akong Rinpoche's reincarnation is a very important topic. I think Lama Yeshe has some particular worries in connection with this topic because he himself is getting a little bit advanced in years. He's around 70 years old. And in relation to that, I would like to uh, add that I have a sincere aspiration and prayers that Lama Yeshe will live a very long life. How much? <laughs> How long? Go on, Lord Sher Sher, do the Samba do do do. But as he gets older and older, his attitude gets worse and worse. <laughs> He's becoming a senior in terms of bad conduct. <laughs> so I do have that aspiration that Lama Yeshe live a very long life to continue these activities that he is engaged in of sustaining Akong Rinpoche's vision and activities. With regard to the reincarnation, this is of course something that falls to me to look after, but I think it is a matter that must be dealt with at first in an environment of great confidentiality. In other words, it has to be done somewhat secretly in the beginning, I think. I don't think it would be wise or skillful uh, to proceed with the next steps in relation to Akam Rinpoche's reincarnation in public. <coughs> the reason for this is because if Akam Rinpoche takes rebirth in Tibet, then it could become a very complicated situation uh, where the Chinese government could get involved and so forth. <coughs> And perhaps it could be then easier if Akam Rinpoche were to take rebirth in a country such as India or another country outside of Tibet. But in any case, I think it's most skillful uh, to proceed quietly <coughs> with regard to the initial next steps in the search for Akam Rinpoche's reincarnation. So I, I discussed this matter with Lama Yeshe and with Garden Lama. And I told them that in these early stages of searching for Rinpoche's reincarnation, uh, it has to be done 
uh, in a very quiet manner uh, with some level of secrecy and confidentiality. And then slowly, slowly, as the process moves forward, uh, we can, I will let you know how things are progressing. But in the beginning stages, the next steps must be taken privately. Ane, tikka yu sameni, tadi chidangi kajuda, jangkama kuni chuju begi, kongpa shena, vision roki, tapena kejiji, tapena amena me kejiji nere, tane shena rude, inji rogolia, sameni kusuare, ina rogolia chikinju de, chuan, niji kongpa, she, kongpa. 자, 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 え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、え、
It's different from ordinary society. It has its own culture, but this culture in turn is somewhat dependent upon the era of time that the monastic Sangha is situated. So with regard to present day monastic Sanghas, I think it would be very difficult to have them be 100% uh, in accord with uh, the precise traditions of the monastic Sangha as those traditions have been explained through the ages. But having a monastic Sangha in itself, I think, is something very important because I think that the Buddha taught that the monastic Sangha is a very important part of the essence of the teachings themselves. There are very important reasons uh, why a monastic Sangha must exist. So the, the presence and existence of the monastic Sangha lies at the very heart of the meaning of the teachings and the purpose of the teachings. Previously, the main approach to monasticism was that one considered it a lifelong commitment. And the vows that one took in order to become a monastic were considered lifelong vows, or in other words, vows that would end at the end of one's lifetime. But it seems that that might be an aspect of monasticism that was somewhat dependent upon the culture, cultural conditions of a particular era. I think these days things are slightly different. Uh, previously, the lives of human beings uh, were somewhat stable and predictable in terms of their basic outward shape. But these days, people's lives change so quickly. And changes in the world also are taking place so quickly. This makes it so that I think in some cases it might be difficult uh, to consider the notion of a lifelong commitment or a lifelong vow. So this is an area that can perhaps be examined freshly. In the Theravada tradition, uh, there is such a thing as temporary monastic ordination, where one might make a commitment of three or four or five or six years or what have you, and sometimes this gradually leads the practitioner to take on a lifetime commitment to monasticism. In any case, I think this is someone that some th I think that this is a topic that we continue that we can continue to reflect upon. Well, <coughs> but the main point is, is that the presence of some type of monastic sangha is very important. Um Amongst
Ah, ya voy a usando en el lado de Omar. Samsung de Azucane de Wizard de Cane de Mimbiche. El permission de Jarson permission de la Tangua. El Wizard de Samoa va a dar dos permisión de Google de Data. Samsung permission de Google de Bear. Permission de Marani. El de Nichima Ochoa. El de Santi Guzentene. Permission de Jarson. El de Tazita. Cachue. In sum, regardless of the amount of time that individuals commit to a monastic lifestyle, having some form of monastic sangha as a practice environment is very important. So other than that, I don't have much to say. This time around, the English consulate gave me a two-year visa. And so it appears that I have the freedom to come and go as I please over the next two years. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not quite that simple. Usually, getting visas for any country that I want to go to is not the most challenging part. The most challenging part is getting permission from the Indian government to leave India and go to that country. So, uh, I've been in the position of waiting for permission. We need lots of permission. We need permission to leave, we need permission to go back. Both. Yeah. So there's been many instances where I've had to wait for permission. But assuming that I receive permission from the Indian government, I think that it will likely be possible for me to come back again soon. Thank you. Thank you. 
lots of Tibetans in Benjam, but half of them is blacklist. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. different types of retreat, you know, that's why I think it, people need to uh, choose which type of retreat is suitable for them. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah?